So the last thing that we're going to do is small. Uh, it's just to add the droplets from the splatter particles using the basically the exact same technique. So the first thing that we're going to do is make a second pool of particles. I'm just going to select the splatter decal particles and duplicate it. I'm using control D on windows. You can also do edit duplicate. And this is going to be called droplet particles. And we're just going to lower the minimum size and the maximum size to 0.1 and 0.25. So they're just going to be smaller. And you could maybe have a smaller number of them if you wanted to, since they're kind of more, less important up to you. I'll, I'll set it at 500. And then all we need to do is go to our splatter particles game object. This is basically already set up. Uh, we have our splat on collision script, which I provided pre-written. I just commented out a couple lines. It's almost exactly the same to what we were doing before. We have a particle launcher, which is the thing that's launching the splat particles, a gradient, a list of collision events, and then we are just using the same code to get the collision events in on particle collision. And then I used a while loop here, but you could use a for loop as well. And then we're just going to call particle decal pool, droplet decal pool dot particle hit, right? So I thought this was kind of fun because it's a example of reusing the particle decal pool to do a, another similar effect. And uh, yeah, just add some juice to the system. So let's save that, just uncomment those two lines, save that, and in Splat and Collision, we're just gonna assign the droplet decal pool, drag it in, and now make sure the collision is turned on, it should be, that should all be ready to use, and spray away and we can see lots of lovely splatters everywhere hooray so i really had a lot of fun making this um and i thought it was pretty interesting this use of the particles to display the decals if we look quickly at the some of you guys may or may not know about our friend, the, where is it? The frame debugger here. I've got it on my second monitor. I'll pull it up here, we'll enable it. And we can scroll through. Oh, let's see, I need to see these both, right? Ooh, it's gonna be hard to fit on the screen at the same time. Okay, and we can see the game view and we can see the frame debugger. Can we get them both on? Anyway. Uh, we can scroll through all the steps in drawing the frame, right? And we can see we're drawing the walls, we're drawing the gun. Do, do, do. And then we draw the all the particles for the shooting. And then all the particles there, one draw call, right? And all the particles for the splats. Where are they? In a set, you can't really see that many of them in the game view, but there they are in a second draw call, right? So quite uh, performant, at least in terms of the GPU, right? There is definitely some cost associated with doing this. Uh, if we profile, I'm on a fairly fast PC here, but if we open the profiler and let's dock it here so we can see it. can see that this is running pretty fast. Most of the time is spent waiting for target FPS, right? So the actual drawing and the rendering and everything is 0.8 milliseconds, less than a millisecond. The physics processing is really low uh, and particle system dot update is 0.07 seconds. So quite speedy, which I think is really cool. Um, and the only garbage collector allocations are happening uh, from the image effects, not from any of the particle stuff we did. I was very careful 
to make sure that it does not allocate. And that's why we're reusing those arrays and overwriting those arrays. So hopefully that is helpful for you guys. I really had a lot of fun making it. I thought it was neat. Um, and I look forward to trying it out in some of my own um, non-work projects. And I hope you guys have fun doing the same. I'm going to stick around and take some questions and answers. Uh, but for those of you guys who are out of here now, thanks so much for watching.